You might have seen or been told that a lower stance is necessary for karate styles such as Shotokan, Goju Ryu, and Shito Ryu. You might have been advised to get your knees forward more or to step out further to get the legs apart more. Of course, through karate, you want to become stronger or you might be looking for the self-defense side or maybe you saw karate on TV or in a drama and you're just so excited to start. So this advice of getting a lower stance seems pretty convincing. However, 99% of the time, people overlook this one simple aspect which turns this getting a lower stance approach useless. So today I'm here to share my knowledge so you don't become an ignorant black belt. Hi guys, I'm Yusuke, a karate coach in Japan, and thank you so much for checking out today's video. This video is episode 3 of our new series of Karate Technique Tuesday, where I share a lot of hidden and secret techniques of karate. So make sure you subscribe and wait for my future videos. On episode 1 and 2, or I guess the episode for this month, we've been covering the topic of dropping your knee. This being a karate sensei in Japan and making English videos for people outside of Japan, I feel like a lot of people miss on this, so please check out part 1 and 2, episode 1 and 2, before watching this one. Okay, let me get straight to the conclusion of this video. The hidden detail that people overlook when lowering their stance is unifying their upper body to the lower body. Well, wait, wait, I know some of you are thinking, I'm not flexible, or I'm not so fit, I don't have the muscles, I don't have the time, or maybe you're just not confident with yourself. But please stick with me for the next 10 minutes and I promise you by the end of the video, you're going to be acquiring this one key factor of karate. So let's get started. All right, let me explain what I mean by unifying. First, let's try this simple exercise. First, lock your hands like this and stretch up. This, please focus on your spine and imagine your spine spreading apart like this. So get that. And from here, keep your arms away from the center of your body and drop it down. This status of your body is what I mean by not being unified. So they're very separate and they're long. I guess if you do ballet or any of those like gymnastics too, you are very used to getting your chest up and getting yourself long, right? In some circumstances in karate, this is necessary. However, it's a little bit different from our context today. Now, Let's now get your spine crushed together with your abs. That's the key point, abs, guys. So what I'd like you guys to do this time is, okay, fix whatever you're wearing. From here, put your hand around your bladder, so right under the belt, or right under your belly button, okay, right here, and the other on your chest. From here, without sliding your hand on your clothes, so keep it right here, bring these two hands together like this. There are two ways to do this. Number one is bending your back. Number two is simply crushing these parts together. I'd like you to take the second one. Give this a try right now. Do not lean forward. Keep yourself straight, okay? That's the key point. Keep yourself straight. Do not tilt your head forward or back. And from here, bring these two together. You might feel like your hips are tightening. That's a good point. In my other videos, I express this as um, waking up your pelvis. So waking this up like this. This is basically a very similar usage. You want to, or I, I think I use the phrase crush your abs, that's another phrase I use. So you want to make this together. That gets your upper body connected to the lower body, or you can look at it as the lower body connecting to the upper body. But whichever way it is, you want your whole body to be together and not apart. So yeah, this part of the stomach, or the area around here is called tanden in Japanese, which is used a lot in Japanese martial arts. You want to get your tai tanden together. That's what you mean, okay? So after you acquire this kind of feeling, let's move on to the next step. Okay, now let's give this a try on various stances of karate. Let's start with a kibadachi or horse stance. You can do naihan chitachi if you like, or shikodachi, either way is fine. Spread your legs apart from here, okay? First, stretch, um, stretch up like this. Get your spine up. And now, just do the same thing. Wake your pelvis up and crush your abs, okay? That should get your, um, your hip bone to your head a little bit shorter. This uh, feeling of togetherness. You wanna stretch, stretch it up again and tight. I know it's very hard to see on, on screen. However, you, I think you can feel it internally. If it's hard, put the hand again crush, stretch, 
crush. Stretch, crush. You can do the same thing for shikodachi, naihan chidachi, or let's do it in kouk sudachi, or nekoashi, whichever way um, that suits your style. From here again, up, down, up, down. You can also assist this with your breathing. Breathe in, and it stretches out. Breathe out, and it tightens. Um, part of the reason why you're told to breathe out when you execute the technique is related to this. Your body becomes together with the breathing. Try on Zen Kutsudachi too. Here. I'll get down. Your abs are crushing together. This has nothing to do with your knee or your ankle. It's all about from here to here on your upper body. So give this a try a couple of times. If it's still hard for you, then try this exercise out. I like you to lay on your back, okay? I do this with my online students a lot. If so, I think you guys, if you guys are watching, I think you know. What, you, what I like you to do is um, avoid getting a space in between your lower back and the floor, okay? So every part of your lower back should be on, in contact with the floor. And from here, I like you to raise your right leg straight up. If you're not used to this exercise, your left side of the lower back is going to pop up. So you want to settle that down. Try that the other way around. So right leg up and place your left lower, lower back like you want to push it onto the wall. When you get that, try both legs up and avoid getting an arc on your lower back. Push your lower back down to the floor. After getting this feeling, you just try to replicate it while standing like this. Here, this versus this. This versus this, okay? So give that a try, and let's now add a little bit of action in here. So like I said in the intro, you might have been told to lower your stance. That's not um, completely wrong. However, we have to do it with this point. And I'm gonna be connecting it to the knee drop later, so please stay tuned for that. Um, so from here, let's say you step into a zeng sudachi here. As you step down, okay? This is the key point. As you step down, you want to bring it down as well. As you step out, obviously, since the legs are spreading apart, your center of gravity, without doing anything, will fall down, okay? It's gonna go down. However, you have to be cautious about your stomach too. As your stomach naturally goes down, you want to unify your upper body to the lower body here together, okay? If you don't do this, you're going to stay high. But from here, you have to do this, this, okay? From here to here. So don't do it after landing. You have to do it as you land. Because every movement, if you divide it up, it's just a small piece of movement that's so useless. You have to connect everything to gain that much power and speed. So that applies for everything. Kouksudachi, don't stay high up and just spread your legs apart. This, you see a lot of the beginners and in the ignorant black belts as well. You want to lower it down and stand. Kibadachi too. Not like this. It's down, okay? Everything is the same. If you can, please Try this with the knee drop concept. Uh, remember this, so not squatting. From This is from episode one. You want to drop down like this, right? Do this with the tightening, like this. If you don't do it, now the chances are, I saw this in my comment section, and I, th I think I agree with you. He mentioned that my chin was going up, which is a bad sign. If your chin is going up, that means your head is not going together with the drop which means this is not unified. You want to unify everything and drop down in one chunk of block or like a Lego block down together. So I'd like you to level up and upgrade your knee drop technique um, if you've been following along. Now let's take a look at it from the context of other sports or other martial arts. Today we'll be taking a look at volleyball and sumo. First, let's take a look at sumo. So let me start by explaining what's happening here. So it's black versus purple. Right now, you know, they've had um, slightly of a push and pull, and right now they're in a stalemate. So nobody's attacking, nobody's winning, nobody's losing with their positioning. From here, what's gonna happen is, from here, burp, 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 black is going to make the purple lose balance right here. 
What the purple wants to do from here is settle down again, get his weight lower again. However, black knows that he wants to do it. So what he's going to do is before the purple goes down again, black will go under him here. So purple, after he loses balance, the spine is stretched out like we talked today. So his goal is to crush it down and get his physical body lower. Black notices. From here, purple wants to go down, crush it down. However, black notices and boom, here. See how it's under him? He's all lifted up now. So for black, it's very easy to push him through. So this is a, you know, the same technique, same aspect seen in sumo, but it's not something they took from karate or anything. It's just something that you can see in underlining in a lot of other martial arts and sports too. Now let's take a look at volleyball. Let's say a super heavy spike is coming straight down right here. What people do in volleyball is, you know, they duck under, they re receive the ball, right? Either to the front, I mean, to the side, wherever the direction is. I think they are commonly told to bend your knee and your hip down like this, like to get the hip down. But like we discussed today, if the spine is not connected, if your upper body isn't unified with your lower body, then the drop is not gonna be heavy and it's not gonna be as fast. So what they should be doing is without not getting, the, getting it straight like this, and the top players do that um, unintentionally, I think, but crush it um, as you go down, right? Like this, and that's a lot faster and more powerful, and you can resist um, the spike coming down. So that was a sport-related application. So yeah, like I told you, you didn't need stamina, you didn't need time, you didn't need your flexibility or anything. I hope you gained a lot from this 10 minute video. And if you like to learn some of these hitting um, techniques of karate or I guess your, your body in general and become healthy, become stronger and become confident with yourself, then please check out my online group and private lessons where I actually can take a look at your movement and give you feedback. I can't wait to see you guys there. So please consider joining from here and wait for my future um, Karate Technique Tuesday videos from here. And this is episode one and two. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.